Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Italian. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Marika. In this series, you will learn everything you need to know to get started learning Italian. That's right, and we're here to help guide you through your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should learn Italian and how to get started. There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off-limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and be able to earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never have even considered going, simply because that wasn't a possibility for you. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language also helps you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you to grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory, as opposed to those who didn't learn another language. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Italian in particular? Italy has a lot to offer. Landscapes, cities, ancient monuments, stunning coastlines. You'll need plenty of time to see them all. And if you learn Italian, your experience will be much more rewarding. Italy has 51 World Heritage Sites. That's more than any other country in the world. Tourism is one of Italy's most profitable industries. Despite this, English is not widely spoken outside the main tourist centers. Rome, Venice, Florence, and other big cities are a must-visit. But if you speak Italian, your experience will be that much more authentic, and you'll be able to take trips to lesser-known cities and cultural sites. A city like Urbino isn't a crowded tourist destination, but it's definitely unique. It's a walled city perched on a hill in a market region. It was an important Renaissance center and the Ducal Palace is definitely worth a visit. Italian people are generally friendly and making an effort to learn the language will significantly improve your chances of making friends. Italy's long history is evident in the architectural styles of many buildings, churches, castles and its art. Not to mention it's the birthplace of the Renaissance, of opera, of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Dante and more. Let's not forget the food. Have you ever heard of pizza, pasta, or spaghetti? Well, they are all Italian foods. Italian cuisine is one of the most popular cuisines in the world. It's extremely rich and varies from region to region. If you know the language, you can easily read the menu and enjoy different types of Italian dishes. There's much more to discover than just pizza and pasta. Of course, it's not all just about food. What about business opportunities? Italy is a highly developed country with a dynamic economy. It's the world's second largest wine producer and the fourth largest manufacturing country. Italian production is renowned all around the world for its high quality creative goods. Major Italian industries include fashion, cars, jewelry, and of course, food. Ferrari, Prada, Gucci, and Armani are just some examples of well-known Italian brands. And Milan Fashion Week is one of the four leading fashion events internationally Thousands of companies all over the world do business with Italy. So, learning Italian will open up many opportunities for you. Okay, so there are clearly many reasons why you should learn Italian. Now we've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning Italian, but how should the viewers get started? Getting started is actually very simple. Just start by learning your first word in Italian and build up from there. The good news, though, is that you already know some Italian. Cappuccino, gelato, maestro. These are all English words of Italian origin. The reverse also applies. 
Nowadays, Italian speakers use a lot of English words in everyday conversation. Babysitter, gossip, meeting. Many English and Italian words are derived from Latin. This means that there will be many words you'll be able to easily recognize. Originale, turista, televisione. See, they're very similar. Now, let's teach you something useful. Grazie. This means thank you in Italian. That's a very versatile phrase. It could be used in all types of situations, both formal and informal. Grazie. A very common mistake many learners make when pronouncing this word is that they don't pronounce the final E clearly. Listen closely to how I pronounce this word. Grazie. Grazie. Another aspect that can be difficult for beginners is learning how to roll the R. Grazie. In the next lesson, we'll give you an in-depth explanation on Italian pronunciation so that you can perfect this simple but useful phrase. Grazie. Well done. Now you know how to say thank you in Italian. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap on what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. Italy has a colorful history with many things for you to see and learn. And to say thank you in Italian, it's... Grazie. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi. Welcome to Introduction to Italian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Marika. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Italian pronunciation. Italian is what is called a syllable-timed language. What this simply means is that every syllable is pronounced for roughly an equal amount of time. Avranno. Avranno. Notice how each syllable is pronounced for roughly the same amount of time? The first N is held for roughly the same amount of time as all the other syllables. Avranno. English, on the other hand, is a stress-timed language. Unstressed syllables are often shortened, while stressed syllables are pronounced longer. Opportunity. Opportunity. The stressed syllable to in opportunity is pronounced longer than all the other syllables. Listen to it again. Opportunity. Compare this once again to the syllables in Italian. Avranno. Even though Italian is not a stress-timed language, individual words still have primary stress. In most Italian words, the stress falls on the second to last syllable so you'll need to pronounce this a tiny, tiny bit longer and louder than the other syllables, but not by much. Avranno. Buongiorno. Apart from the stressed syllable, all other syllables are pronounced for roughly an equal amount of time. One of the biggest differences between English and Italian pronunciation is that Italian is largely phonetic, meaning most words are pronounced as they are written. This makes learning Italian much simpler than learning English, for example. For the most part, English and Italian share the same consonant and vowel sounds. I, U, B, D, F, M. In fact, 75% of all sounds in Italian are similar to English, so most of these sounds will be familiar to you. Some sounds, however, will be quite new. The good news, though, is that these will be very limited. E, E. Z, y. Let's briefly take a look at some of the unique sounds of Italian. First, let's start with the vowels. There are five vowels in Italian, A, E, I, O, and U. The vowels A, I, and U will always be pronounced in the same way. A, I, U. These sounds should be relatively easy for you to duplicate. The vowels E and O, however, will be a little more challenging. They each have two variant sounds, one open version and one closed version. The open version requires you to open your mouth wide, while the closed version is pronounced more narrowly. Compare the open E followed by a closed E. E, 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 E. Now the open O followed by the closed O. 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 Even when there are two or more vowels in a row, just pronounce them separately. 
aereo. Okay, now let's move on to the consonants. How would you pronounce this word in Italian? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Despite not knowing Italian pronunciation, the chances are that your pronunciations of the S, P, and G consonants were spot on. Most consonants you encounter shouldn't be too difficult for you to pronounce. Some consonants, like the rolled R sound in Italian, however, will be more challenging. Do you remember how to pronounce this word? We taught you this word in the previous lesson. It's pronounced grazie. This word uses the rolled R sound. Grazie. To pronounce this sound, place the tip of your tongue on the gum ridge behind your upper teeth, just like you do when you want to say the English D sound. Then relax your tongue and blow out air. Rrr. Concentrate the air pressure at the tip of your tongue and gum ridge. The air will push your tongue away from the gum ridge. When this happens, try to force your tongue back into position. This should all happen very quickly. Rrr. One useful trick is to flip your tongue up and back against the gum ridge the very moment you feel the air begin to push through. Rrr. Rrr. Grazie. Grazie. Well done! This is a challenging sound, so don't be too hard on yourself if you didn't get it. Another significant aspect of Italian pronunciation is the pronunciation of double consonants. Unlike English, double consonants must be pronounced clearly and held for longer periods of time in Italian. Failure to do so could result in miscommunication. Pala, palla. Remember how Italian is a syllable-timed language? Imagine that you're holding that consonant sound for one extra syllable. Palla, palla. Many learners do not hold the sound for long enough, so when in doubt, pronounce it a little longer than you would normally. Okay, let's recap what we've learned in this lesson. In this lesson, you learned that Italian is a syllable-timed language, where syllables are pronounced for roughly an equal amount of time. Italian pronunciation is very regular, so most words are pronounced as they're spelled. Collectively, nearly all sounds in Italian are identical to English, and there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. And finally, double consonants are an important aspect of Italian pronunciation which you need to look out for. Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Italian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Marika. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Italian grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with, I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first, followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence, I ate an apple, in Italian. Io ho mangiato una mela. Like before, let's remove the article to keep it simple. So we are just left with the words. If we break down the Italian sentence, we get the subject io, meaning I, then comes the verb ho mangiato, meaning ate, and finally we have the object mela, meaning apple. The basic word order for Italian then is SBO. It's the same as English. This means that you can convert an English sentence into Italian simply by replacing the English words with Italian words, and you'll still be understood. Italian word order, however, is much more flexible than English. If we swapped the subject and object around, we'd get apple ate I in English, which changes the meaning of the sentence completely. In Italian, however, the core meaning of the sentence does not change it would still essentially be, I ate apple. Me la ho mangiato io. As you can see, the word order of Italian is quite flexible. More often than not, if you wanted to say, I ate an apple in Italian, you would not say, Io ho mangiato una mela. Instead, you would more likely say, ate an apple in Italian. 
ho mangiato una mela. This is because Italian is a null subject language where the word for the pronoun is omitted because it's already implied. This is because all of the information can be derived from the way the verb is conjugated in the sentence. For example, the verb aprire means to open. When you conjugate it, it changes according to the subject. Hai aperto la scatola means you open the box. Hanno aperto la scatola means they opened the box. Let's take a look at another example. Tornare means to return. Siamo tornati a casa in treno means we return home by train. Sono tornata a casa in treno means I return home by train. Can you see how the subject changes based on the way the verb is conjugated in the sentence? Okay, let's move on. Negating a sentence in Italian is incredibly simple. All you have to do is to put the word non in front of the verb. Let's go back to the original example, I ate an apple. The verb here is ate or ho mangiato in Italian. Ho mangiato una mela. To make this sentence negative, simply add non before the verb ho mangiato. Non ho mangiato una mela. If it were Carla ate an apple, it would be Carla ha mangiato una mela. Adding non before the verb would make it negative. Carla non ha mangiato una mela. Siamo tornati a casa in treno. Non siamo tornati a casa in treno. You can create any negative sentence in Italian simply by adding non before the verb. Asking a question in Italian is even easier than making it negative. All you have to do is simply raise the pitch at the end of a sentence to turn it into a question. Hai aperto la scatola. Hai aperto la scatola? No rearranging of words is needed. Hai aperto la scatola. Hai aperto la scatola? You can create any basic yes-no questions in Italian this way. If you want to be a little more specific, simply add the question word in front of the question. For example, perché means why. Perché hai aperto la scatola? Quando means when. Quando hai aperto la scatola? And come means how. Come hai aperto la scatola? Now you know how to create questions in Italian. Well done! We've covered a lot of things in this lesson, so let's recap what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Italian sentences can be formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order. Italian tends to omit the subject if that subject is a pronoun. You make a sentence negative by adding non before the verb. To turn a sentence into a question, simply raise your pitch at the end. And if you want to be more specific, just add a question word at the beginning of the question. Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Italian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone! I'm Marika. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Italian writing. Both English and Italian use the Latin alphabet. Unlike English, however, Italian only uses a select number of letters. The Italian alphabet has 21 letters. Five of them are vowels and 16 are consonants. Compared to English's 26, you have five fewer letters to worry about. Missing are the letters J, K, W, X, and Y. They're all considered to be foreign letters in Italian and are only used for words borrowed from other languages. The most common examples are jeans, password, relax, yoga, and extra. An accent is a marker that is used to indicate some additional quality. That being said, accents aren't as intimidating as they look. They actually help you more than anything. There are two types of accents used in Italian. The grave accent, which looks like a line falling from left to right, and the acute accent, which looks like a line rising from left to right. The grave accent can only appear over vowels. Any vowel that appears at the end of a word can have a grave accent. Città, caffè, lunedì, 
falo, ju. The grave accent then actually takes away the ambiguity from where to place the stress. It's essentially telling you to stress this vowel. So whenever you see the grave accent in Italian, just stress that syllable. If the vowel at the end is an e and it has the grave accent on top, it's indicating that we should pronounce it as an open e. And of course, we must stress the syllable. Te, caffè, e. The other accent is the acute accent, and it's used to indicate that we should pronounce it as a closed e. Perché, finché. The acute accent can only appear over the vowel e, and only when it's at the end of a word. Vowels that are not at the end of a word are rarely marked with an accent outside of dictionaries. When this happens, however, it's used to help the reader distinguish between two words which would otherwise appear the same. Ancora, ancora. Principi, principi. Now you know the function of accents in Italian. Another important element to Italian writing is learning when to use capital letters, as they differ from English quite a bit. Generally, words in Italian are uncapitalized nearly as much as English. For example, days, months, and languages are capitalized in English, but not in Italian. So we simply write lunedì, martedì, aprile, maggio, inglese, italiano. Capital letters are only generally used at the beginning of a sentence or with proper nouns. A proper noun can be the name of a person, like Rita, but also the name of a place, like Venezia or Montebianco. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that the standard Italian alphabet consists of 21 letters. You also learned that the grave accent can appear over any vowel at the end of a word and is used to indicate that the syllable must be stressed. When the grave accent appears on the letter E, you must use an open pronunciation. When the acute accent is used, it'll only appear over the letter E, indicating that you must use a closed pronunciation. Finally, Italian only uses capitalization at the beginning of a sentence and with proper nouns. Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Italian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Marika. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Italian words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you're repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this phrase in the first lesson of this series. Do you remember what it was? Grazie. It means thank you. Grazie. Keep repeating after Marika until you get it. Grazie. Your turn. Grazie. Once more. Grazie. Do you remember the trilled R? We talked about it in lesson two. Even though it looks like the English R, the pronunciation is very different. Listen to how Marika is pronouncing this sound. R, R. All together, it's... Grazie. One last time. Grazie. The next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's to apologize or to excuse yourself. Mi scusi. This means... Excuse me or I'm sorry. Mi scusi. Use this phrase when you want to grab a waiter's attention or when you're hustling through the busy streets of Rome. Mi scusi. Your turn. Mi scusi. Imagine you're on the street and you want to stop someone to ask them for directions. What do you say? Mi scusi. One last time. Mi scusi. Now you can say thank you, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Italian. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful thing to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the train station, or where the hotel is. To ask where something is, just say Dov'è? and add the name of the place or location. 
If you want to ask, where is the bathroom, for example, it'd be... Dov'è il bagno? For the train station, it'll be... Dov'è la stazione? And so on. You can ask where anything is, simply by starting with... Dov'è? And then adding the name of the place or location. Now listen and repeat after Marika. Dov'è? Your turn. Dov'è? One last time. Dov'è? Okay, now let's teach you some vocabulary so that you can use it in the sentence. Here are some of the most common words you'll need to learn. Bagno. Bathroom. Bagno. Dov'è il bagno? Next. Stazione. Station. Stazione. Dov'è la stazione? If you ask someone this question, they'll direct you to the closest train station. If you'd like to ask where a specific train station is, like Roma Termini Station, for example, simply place the location after station. Stazione. Stazione Roma Termini. Dov'è la stazione Roma Termini? Next. Hotel. 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 Dov'è l'hotel? For a specific hotel, do the same as before. Just place the name after hotel. Hotel. Hotel Eden. Dov'è l'hotel Eden? Next. Supermercato. Supermarket. Supermercato. Dov'è il supermercato? You can ask where anything is in Italian simply by saying Dov'è? And then adding the name of the place or location. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and to ask where something is in Italian. And in this series, we introduce you to the basics of Italian pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Marika and listen to some of her tips on how to learn Italian from a native Italian perspective. The biggest mistake I see learners make is trying to master Italian grammar before anything. While grammar is important, it's only really important at a more intermediate level. If you think about it, children learn how to speak their language well before they can actually read a grammar textbook. Your goal at this moment is to expand your vocabulary by learning words for everyday objects in Italian. You can then use those words to stream them together to communicate. The best way to learn Italian, like any language, is to expose yourself to language as much as possible. In our day and age, technology allows you to immerse yourself in Italian. Watching Italian videos, reading blogs or websites in Italian, listening to podcasts, the possibilities are endless. Watching Italian movies can help, but keep in mind that most people don't talk like that in everyday conversation. Watching contemporary videos such as our videos here at italianpod101.com will ensure that you're learning real, applicable Italian in the fastest and most effective way. You've reached the end of this Introduction to Italian course, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Italian fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our Italian in 3 Minutes series, where we teach you beginner vocab and even more useful phrases. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. Good luck as you continue learning Italian, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Bye!